Um, but I am excited to be here. Okay, you came up here and you didn't tell me your name, so I don't know your My name. My name is Mike Shinoda. I play in a band called Lincoln Park. Um, she didn't know that. That's a great, this is a great reaction. <laughs> Official Mike Shinoda on Twitch. Lincoln Park were hot off the success of the one-two punch of Hybrid Theory and Meteora in the early 2000s. Many were left wondering how the band could follow up such iconic albums. Rather than creating a trilogy of records, Lincoln Park returned after a four-year break between studio albums with their third LP, Minutes to Midnight, an album that shed their new metal tag and saw them go in a much more experimental and alternative rock direction. Today's video, let's explore the album Minutes to Midnight. Lincoln Park, an American rock band, was formed in 1996 in Agoura Hills, California. The band struggled to secure a record deal, having almost every record label turn them down. But after much persistence, things finally seemed to move in the right direction as the group nabbed a recording deal with Warner Brothers. Lincoln Park put out their major label debut, Hybrid Theory, in late 2000, with it becoming one of the defining albums of the decade, selling over 10 million copies in America, being certified diamond. The album's blend of new metal and rap rock with hits like One Step Closer in the end, as well as Crawling, propelled Lincoln Park to international fame and established them as a leading act in the new metal genre. They released the remix album, Reanimation, in 2002 that also proved to be a success, and their long-awaited follow-up, Meteora, which came out in 2003, continued their success, debuting at the number one spot on the Billboard 200 and featuring some of their best-known songs, including Somewhere I Belong and Numb. But there were little hints that the band was moving away from that new metal sound with tracks like Breaking the Habit, featuring no distorted guitar or rapping vocals. The song topped the mainstream rock tracks chart and was also a crossover hit. Linkin Park returned in 2004, teaming up with rapper Jay-Z to put out the EP Collision Course that topped the Billboard charts and produced a Grammy award-winning mashup, Numb Encore. It was only the second EP in history to top the album charts with the other being, well, you guys guessed it, Alice in Chains' 1994 release, Jar of Flies. But the grind of recording and as well as constant touring and just being around one another all the time resulted in the group taking a much needed break in 2004. Chester recalled to Kerrang, we felt that we needed to go and hang out with our friends, go grocery shopping and do normal stuff like that. But it wasn't the case for all the members as Shinoda started the group Fort Minor, who I've actually done a whole video on, and they had a few hits, one of which you might remember was the song Remember the Name. This is 10% luck, 20% while Chester founded the group Dead by Sunrise. The time off and these side projects, in addition to ensuing business issues with their label and Chester getting divorced from his first wife, Samantha, resulted in fans having to wait a pretty long time for Linkin Park's long anticipated third album. There were also rumors swirling at one point that the band had broken up, with Chester telling Kerrang, there were a lot of rumors that we broke up. That's cool because at least people were thinking of us, but we were never close to breaking up, not even at times. Not even when I had a lot of personal stuff going on that wasn't to do with the band. Chester also got remarried during the break between their second and third album. But things weren't helped in 2005 when work on their third record was delayed, when Linkin Park was engaged in a serious dispute with their label Warner Brothers. The band wasn't happy with the terms they negotiated in their original contract, and at one point asked to be released by Warner Brothers. The band was also upset that they weren't going to be getting a cut of the label's upcoming stock sale, and expressed concerns in the press that the label wouldn't be able to market and promote the band's future releases properly. Linkin Park was asking for a whopping $60 million advance plus a joint venture deal in which the band split the profits rather than receiving royalties on future album sales. By 2005, both sides eventually settled the dispute which saw the band being paid a $15 million advance 
and work finally commenced on their forthcoming album. The band enlisted producer extraordinaire Rick Rubin, whose past works included Run DMC, Red Hot Chili Peppers, as well as Beastie Boys, to name a few. Shinoda also produced the album as well. For Shinoda, it was a no-brainer to work with Rubin as he cited the producer's work on Run DMC's record Raising Hell, as well as the Chili Peppers' Blood Sugar Sex Magic. The change resulted in the group spending almost 16 months in the studio, the longest time they'd ever spent in their career up until this point. The sessions began in 2006, and Rubin's unfiltered approach sometimes rub the members the wrong way with Shinoda telling Kerrang, it's frustrating to have someone dismiss something in 30 seconds that you've been working on for days. This was also a sentiment echoed by the group's drummer, remarking how he spent weeks tweaking the drum sounds on one song only for Rubin to tell him to use the demo version instead. Rubin also pushed Linkin Park to drop what Shinoda described as their perfectionism in favor of more live sounds. Rubin also encouraged the group to forget the Linkin Park sound and just write music and see what comes out. The band agreed with this approach thinking they'd exhausted their past sound and that it was too easy for other bands to replicate as well. Chester was also adamant in numerous interviews for Minutes to Midnight that they didn't want to make a trilogy of similar sounding records. Chester remarked to Kerrang, calling us new metal now is to me like saying you suck with Shinoda adding, we thought, fine, you're pissing us off. We're going to make something so different, you can shove new metal up your ass. But at the same time, they didn't want to lose what people enjoyed about the band. It was a difficult balancing act. When Ruben asked Linkin Park initially how they made their past records, he remarked how they assembled songs not so much like most rock bands do, but more like a rap production team. So they even threw out their process of writing songs. So while guitarist Brad Delson and Mike Shinoda worked on ideas and then presented them to the band when they were far enough along, they went in a completely different direction this time around. For their third record, they had everyone bring in ideas, or seeds as Rick Rubin referred to them as, and these weren't fully flushed out ideas, but rather maybe a drum track or a guitar riff to bounce off one another. It resulted in the band having about 150 ideas, to narrow down to about a dozen songs. The lyrics were the last part of the process, so Mike and Chester just scatted or sang gibberish to at least nail the melody down for the song and see which ideas were worth developing any further. Released on May 14, 2007, Minutes to Midnight marked a significant shift in Linkin Park's traditional sound. They favored a more diverse and mature alternative rock style on the record. As for where the title came from, Here's Chester explaining it. Well, it actually comes from a, a special I was watching on the History Channel, of all places. Um, it, it, it happened to be uh, about it, the Doomsday Clock, mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know they kept saying like five minutes to midnight in whatever year, you know, and uh, it moves back and forth. And I just thought the idea of <clears throat> midnight being like the ultimate, like the end of all time, mm -hmm. or it could be like the end of like with the band, like the end of one era and the beginning of something new. It, it just felt like it really fit. And uh, you can apply it to like all sorts of different scenarios outside of just the band. And so, um, you know, we were having a really hard time naming the record. We were actually like this close to just calling it Linkin Park because we had basically nothing to work with. <laughs> there was a few that we kicked around, but like it was just, if, if two guys liked it, everybody else hated it. Right. You know, or there was there was like literally nothing that we could all agree on. So, um, which is which is really weird for us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> While Minutes to Midnight was a deliberate attempt by Linkin Park to reinvent themselves, there were still a few songs like Bleed It Out and Hands Held High that still had rapping in them. The show, choppy boards and a sloppy blow, shotgun, opera, lock and low, cock it back and then watch it go. In fact, Chester noted to an interviewer, there's still a hip hop element to us and that'll always be there, but we've really moved away from anything that sounds like new metal. He added that while yes, Linkin Park helped create the genre and defined it, he wasn't a fan of a lot of bands in that space. Minutes to Midnight also featured more singing from Shinoda, who took on lead vocals for the first time on tracks like In Between, and it was the first Linkin Park album to include guitar solos, as well as carry a parental advisory label sticker. The lyrics also took a more political tone uh, this time around, like the little things that give you away, as well as hands held high, that take aim at bumbling world leaders, high gas prices, and just general global insecurity, 
so it's not much different than today. Shinoda remarked about the band's political tones to the LA Daily News, it's a fine line between being preachy and speaking our minds about something we can't be quiet about. The lead single, What I've Done, was released in early April of 2007 and appeared on the soundtrack for the Michael Bay-directed Transformers film. I still remember hearing the song nonstop on Sirius XM Hits 1 in the spring and summer of 2007. The song dealing with regrets with an equally powerful music video of the social, political, and environmental ills of the human race. One could also interpret the first line of the song with the band's farewell to their past. What I've Done became Linkin Park's most commercially successful song of their career, at least in terms of sales, peaking at number 6 on the Hot 100 chart and topping the Mainstream Rock Tracks chart, and topping the Alternative Airplay chart. The song was also featured a year later as an on-disc track for Guitar Hero World Tour, and later released as DLC for Rock Band 3. There were countless other hits from the album as well, including the second single, Bleed It Out, which was a top five hit on mainstream rock and the alternative airplay charts. The third single, the U2 inspired Shadow of the Day was another top 10 hit on the rock and alternative charts, and was also a crossover hit, peaking at number 15 on the Hot 100 chart. The single Given Up was another top 10 hit on the alternative and rock charts, while the power ballad Leave Out All the Rest was a song that took on a new meaning following Chester's death in 2017. To be Minutes to Midnight debuted at number one on the Billboard 200 with first week sales of 623,000 copies, making it the highest selling debut of 2007. It also gave the band their third number one record. The album went on to be certified five times platinum in the States. Minutes to Midnight received mixed reviews from critics though. While some praised the band's new direction and Ruben's production, others felt the album lacked the energy and innovation of their previous efforts. Fans had varied reactions to the album. Some appreciated the band's willingness to evolve and explore new musical territories while others missed the raw energy of their earlier albums. Despite the mixed reception though, the album's commercial success showed Linkin Park's ability to adapt and remain relevant in a changing musical industry. In doing press for the record and touring, the band revealed that it was going to be the most environmentally friendly tour in the band's history, with their tour buses running on biofuel. In the years following its release, the band members have expressed pride in Minutes to Midnight as a pivotal moment in their career. Mike Shinoda described the record as a breakthrough in their development and also emphasized their desire to push boundaries and experiment with new sounds. Chester, meanwhile, made note that the album was about recognizing past faults and moving forward, as well as reflecting on the band's growth and maturity. Overall, Minutes to Midnight represented a bold and transformative period for Linkin Park, showcasing their willingness to take risks and redefine their sound. Fans were even more split with the release of their follow-up 2010's A Thousand Suns, but for a period of time, Minutes to Midnight represented a bridge from their old sound to where the band wanted to go. Sadly, a decade after it came out, Linkin Park were finished after the tragic passing of Chester Bennington. Let me know your thoughts on Minutes to Midnight and what are some of your favorite tracks off the record and do you guys think Linkin Park will be returning in some shape or form? That does it for today's video guys. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again in Rock Culture Stories. Take care.